Hi, I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey, and I'm the workshop coordinator for 240 Tutoring. Today, I'm going to be doing part one of a video series on rock cycles. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can easily follow along. And today, part one is going to focus on weathering and erosion. Now, you might be thinking, is that part of the rock cycle? Actually, it does relate, and I'm going to get to that in just a second. Part two will be on the sedimentary rock cycle. Part three will be on the metamorphic rock cycle, and part four will be on the igneous rock cycle. So be on the lookout for the rest of the videos in this series. Now, understand that when we talk about weathering and erosion, this is some prerequisite knowledge that you have to understand before we can talk about the sedimentary rock cycle. When we're talking about the sedimentary rock cycle, it's going to use those terms, weathering and erosion. Now, if you look these up in your resource materials or in our 240 tutoring study guide, you will find that this topic actually appears in two different places. So when we're talking about weathering and erosion, it can appear in the constructive and deconstructive processes of the earth category, or it can fall under the rock cycle category. So these are two important terms that you need to know and people often confuse. So let's jump right in. If you are wondering, do I need to watch this video? Is this on my test? Here's a table to help you see what standards and what tests this content will apply to. And as you can see, there are several. So what is weathering? Weathering is the process where rocks, soil, and minerals are broken down or gradually worn away over time. These small pieces we call sediments. So it's that breaking down gradually over time. Now this can occur in two ways. So the first way this can occur is physical. This is what we typically teach in elementary school. Sometimes it's referred to as mechanical weathering. So this is when rocks are broken down into smaller pieces by some force such as water, wind, ice, or plant growth. Now as we move into the middle school and upper grades, we also talk about chemical weathering. This is where we have a reaction between the rock and some other substances like oxygen or carbon dioxide or acids that actually change that rock. So it is broken down as a result of that interaction. Chemical weathering can actually change the color and shape of the rock a little bit more significantly than physical weathering. So there's your two types. Now let's talk about erosion. So weathering, breaking down, erosion is going to be the movement. There's your keyword, movement or transporting of those weathered materials. So weathering occurs first and then erosion occurs second. So it's the movement of those weathered materials or sediments, because remember those little pieces that have broken apart are called sediments. So I like to look at this as Weathering makes the mess, breaks it apart. Erosion cleans it up, carries it away. So hopefully that'll help you remember it. Now what happens when it lands? When it actually is dropped off, so right after erosion, wherever that material lands, that's called deposition. So think about it's being deposited, it's deposition, okay? Now, are there types of erosion? It can actually occur through a few different natural forces, such as wind, water, and sometimes ice. So wind can be small amounts of wind or large amounts, such as a dust storm. Water can be rain, runoff in streams or larger channels of water like rivers. You can even see this in the coastal areas at the beach. If erosion occurs with ice, that's typically in the form of a glacier. So again, the wind, the water, the ice, the glacier is moving those broken little weathered pieces away. And where they land, that's where they're deposited, or deposition. 
Now let's do a couple of practice questions. With each of these videos, I'm gonna do a little short instruction and then a couple of practice questions. So I can keep them short, but hopefully get you exactly what you need. So here's the first one. Water runs over a rock for a period of time, causing parts of the rock to break off. This is an example of which of the following. Now, hopefully you spotted that keyword break. That water is causing parts of the rock to break off. Now, hopefully that immediately tells you what it is. But if we have to use process of elimination, this convergent boundary doesn't really relate to anything we've been talking about. In fact, this is where tectonic plates meet. So hopefully you could rule that one out. Hopefully you can remember that deposition is depositing since the word deposit is in there. Now you just gotta choose between weathering and erosion. Remember, weathering makes the mess, erosion cleans it up. So the breaking off would be weathering. Now this next question, which of the following processes occurs when wind carries away pieces of sediment from a mountaintop? So keyword here, I hope you spotted it already, is carries. The wind is carrying, it's moving those little pieces of sediment, okay? So hopefully you can eliminate both types of weathering. You can remember that deposition is just where it lands. That's the process of landing, wherever it's laid down, all right? And this, because it's the carrying, the movement of those sediments, the correct answer would be D, erosion. Now, hopefully, this has helped you clear up any misconceptions you have about the difference between weathering and erosion, and you need to be on the lookout for the next three videos on the three different rock cycles. Of course, remember you can find more information in our 240 Tutoring Study Guides. You can follow us on all our social media. I'll put those links in the comments. If you have any questions, put those in the comments or send us an email at workshops at 240tutoring.com. And of course, you can visit all of our web pages. I hope to see you in part two of this series. Again, I'm Dr. Christy Mulkey with 240 Tutoring. Thank you.